Okay, so that really wasn't much of a hard upgrade at all. So that was enough to get everything working. There are a couple other things we should do. One is in endpoint.ex. We're going to go down to the bottom and then extract these, uh, these three options here into a session options module attribute. And we'll just call that session options. So session underscore options. And remember with module attributes, you don't use an equal sign, just whatever is to the right of it is the value of it. So this is our session options. We'll move that way to the top of the app because uh, that's where module attributes generally go. And then we'll go back down here and this plug session, we're just going to give it the same things it had before, except we're getting it from the module attribute now. Save that. And then those session options also have to be passed along to our live view socket. So comma web socket. This is just a, a key value here. And inside this we have connection underscore info is going to be session, which has session options like so. This is future mark. There is a mistake. This should have been connect info, not connection info. You need connect info if you want to get access to everything in your socket when it loads up. Like this. Sorry about that. Now, the next thing we're going to need, if we want to uh, use this in the context of live forms, is we're going to need a CSRF token. So let's go back to our app and then we'll go to app.html.eex, which is the main layout template. The CSRF token should go before the closing of the head tag. So let's put it in here. And Phoenix actually already has something built in that will provide it for us. It's just CSRF underscore meta underscore tag. And that will put the token into the page with a few uh, few things to help us grab it. So let's take a look at the source. And you can see towards the bottom, there's this meta content equals all of this. CSRF param is CSRF token. And the name is CSRF token. We can use that to get it from JavaScript. So let's go to our app.js. Since we want to have access to that token before we set up the socket, let's get it right here. Let's CSRF token equal document dot query selector. Let's see, we want to grab meta where the name equals single quote CSRF dash token, close single quote, those are bracket or double quote dot get attribute content and just to make sure that's working let's uh, set window dot csrf token to csrf token we'll go over to our browser and have a look csrf token looks like we got one Looks like it's different when we reload it. Excellent. So we don't actually want to put that on window. That was just to make sure that we had everything. And inside this live socket constructor, we'll just add another parameter. And that will be params CSRF, actually, no, underscore CSRF underscore token is our CSRF token. And then let's look in the, uh, the terminal and we'll see if we've got it there. Restart and yes, now we have connection info and our CSRF token. So we, we have two CSRF tokens. One is in the connection info and then the other is coming in from Phoenix instead of being for the WebSocket. Next thing to do is go to our live template, foo live and pardon the New Year's fireworks. And we want to make a new render function to replace this one. 
the new render function is going to bring in the, the template through its own file instead of doing uh, an inline render like that. So we'll say render uh, assigns page view dot render index dot actually we'll just, this one's going to be foo dot html and we'll pass the assigns to it. Then we'll copy these four lines into a new template. And just for now, let's, uh, let's comment these out like so. Our new template is going to be inside of page, not this one, but it's going to be foo.html.leex. That's a live template as opposed to a normal one. And we'll paste those four lines in here. Actually, we don't need, we don't need the sigil with the string delimiters. We'll untab that as well. And go back to foo live, save it, and let's see if we still have our template. Page view.render is undefined. That's because we need to alias reactor web dot page view. And now render should be defined and probably need to restart the server there. And now render should be defined and we have access to everything once again. We'll kill that dead code. Now the next question is, does Foo Live spark joy? And I would say it does not. So we're going to remove it. And we're also going to get rid of the live template that we've added. And we are ready to go back to the plan. We're going to get rid of all this stuff for the previous app and save this and then we're ready to use generators to create all of the context the schemas and actually even the html templates for all of the things we need the generated templates can still be used in a live view app in fact if you check out the phoenix live view examples uh, repo from chris mccord you'll see some of that in action see you next time